All right, all right, all right, wrestling fans, the shadow is here, the shadow's back. Uh, Mr. Storm himself is here navigating the whole system, as always, and uh, we're going to jump right into it. It's been like a, a crazy, exciting week in professional wrestling. Uh, this is uh, two days after WrestleMania. This is the day after Raw, and we're, we're talking about like some really exciting things that are happening and things that are coming. So just a quick recap on WrestleMania, because we did that with the, uh, with the Tech Master and Chris. Uh, after WrestleMania, so the shadow just wanted to give a little bit more on his views. Uh, WrestleMania was a fantastic show. Night one was um, kind of flat. Um, they say because it was cold, but you know it was a flat night. Um, the matches weren't as exciting as you expect it to be. Um, Rhea Ripley and the man herself, they had an okay opening match. Now, of course, they said that the man was hurt. She was had a fever and all that other kind of good stuff. But, you know, you know I, I thought it could be better. She missed a lot of spots and things of that nature. But overall, I think they did a decent job. But I want to touch on just one thing, and that is Stand and Deliver, the NXT. NXT, fantastic show. I mean, if just the point being, if that was night one of WrestleMania, Oh, my goodness. That's like four and a half star uh, show right there. So my opinion for next year at WrestleMania is this, and I get the fact that uh, NXT, they want them to be showcased and highlighted alone, stand and deliver, delivering a top top pay-per-view type uh, show. But I really feel like it's a WrestleMania weekend. If you're going to have two nights, which there's been debates on should there be two nights or should there be just one night. Um, if they're going to have two nights, you go ahead and merge the NXT into night one. Dabble in some of the uh, WWE superstars. And I think that night one should be about up and coming stars in WWE. This is the new era. So next year, WrestleMania, the new era should just be engulfed into night one of WrestleMania. I think that that would probably translate better. Um, I think that you're going to get better quality matches. I think that you're going to highlight some of the really, really good up and coming superstars because we saw uh, um, Obi Femi, we saw uh, Trick Williams, we saw a lot, Ilya, we saw a lot of really good talent there. And that's if you watch stand and deliver but on the wrestlemania card seeing these guys would be like way better on a whole nother level so my opinion wrestlemania next year you do two nights but night one is the up and coming new era stars mixed with the nxt stars and smackdown and raw that's how you do night one I would definitely agree with you, Shadow. I thought night one was a little bit more of the lackluster night. Uh, night two moved in and better, and I think you're right with the NXT because you remember when it was just one night, they used to have like the dark matches, and they used to do that on the, either cable or the internet. And I think that you're right that they definitely need to spotlight some of the NXT. And then I think some of the professional wrestlers wouldn't have been tired. Night two, they had to go from night one into night two, you know? Yeah, agreed, agreed. And and having having to put your top stars on both nights to really help sell it. Um, I got I get what they did and I love the storyline. The storyline was fantastic. But yeah, I think that there's a really big room of opportunity for them to just showcase new stars, up and coming stars, your mid carters and everything. And then you lay it out to where it's like who's gonna get the main event for night one? You know, whether it is the uh, women's wrestlers or the, or the NXT stars or what have you. So you leave that at that. And, and then, you know, hopefully we'll see that change in the new era. And speaking of new era, what Triple H has done, what he is doing is a tremendous job. I mean, WWE, the freedom, everyone talking about the freedom to be creative, the differences in the backstage. And you don't I can name his name because I'm not in WWE. You don't have Vince McMahon back there nitpicking detailed on every single piece of the show to where your creative input is not used where a wrestler can't like say a specific thing or take a storyline or take a monologue somewhere in a different direction that just twists 
a little bit of what the script says for them to do. Um, I think it translated with Cody Rhodes. The Rock, absolutely. He just did what he wanted mm-hmm. to, and he was tremendous. Uh, Roman Reigns, fantastic. Much props to him and what he's done and what he's accomplished. And the intriguing thing is where he goes next, because as we all should know by now, Raymond Ro- Ray- Roman Reigns has just signed a deal with Nike. He has mm. his own brand on Jordans. He has his own line in the Jordan lines. I mean, that's it, Air Reigns. That's huge. That's tremendous. There has yet to be one professional wrestler that's ever been able to do that. And I always thought that John Cena should have had his own mm. tennis shoe line. I mean, mm. if yeah. everybody thinks back when he used to pump up, do the little pump up tennis shoe thing, that was that was cool because it was nostalgic. But and he was the only wrestler at the time wearing tennis shoes. So John Cena could have made millions and millions of dollars if he got him a shoe line and Nike line. But Roman Reigns is there now, and it's going to be intriguing to see who else or who's next to get their own line of tennis shoes and stuff. Everybody's got merchandise, but tennis shoes, mm. that's that's, that's NBA level. That's that's, that's huge. Mm-hmm. That's <laughs> so, big, brother. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and it's like you think about it, it's just like what there's there's a uh, Black Mamba, Kobe. Yeah, Lyle, absolutely. You know, he has mm-hmm. a signature line. I mean, who else can you? There's only a handful. Oh, uh, of have the Kyrie Irving, uh, Kevin Durant. There's there, there's several, but it's mostly we've never seen it Big. as Big. like wrestlers though. Yeah. So yeah. that's the different brand. You know, I know he does like you know outside. Uh, other agencies and other sports, but I've never seen in order to get a, a Nike brand shoe. And let me tell you something: I may think about purchasing those Nikes just because Roman Reigns. I think we won't see that happen again for any other wrestlers. I, I agree. Look, it's not going to be like a Trump tennis shoe. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> this is this is on a level to where it's like even myself. I'm just like, yo, I saw a couple of the designs, and I'm like, ah, oh, I might just get a pair and just put it in the closet for exactly. a decade. You know, exactly. so uh, kudos to him. Kudos to the new era. Kudos to uh, where uh, they're taking things. And I think that the rewards for WrestleMania definitely went to Sami Zayn for winning the IC mm-hmm. title. Uh, definitely went to Bailey for winning his title. Our uh, truth and Miz got rewarded. My, and, my, and my favorite are, part of the night, brother. My favorite. Yeah, part and that of the was night. A, that was an entertaining <laughs> match. It was definitely an entertaining match. And but these are the guys that have been with the WWE for a long mm-hmm. time. These are the ones that have like stuck in and 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 took the dirt, took the trash, took the crap, took the crappy matches, job for. Uh, eons and everything and especially our troop who's 50 something mm-hmm. years old mm-hmm. this guy has been like what uh i think i heard mark henry say he's been in it over 20 years mm-hmm. like there's not too many guys that's still around wwe for over 20 years so uh kudos to them for giving him his wrestlemania moment and to miz because the miz definitely deserves it he's that workhorse guy and, and um he's that guy that will be working mm-hmm. backstage when he retires you know uh, and Sami Zayn as well, you know, um, that guy is phenomenal and stuff. So overall, I think the WWE is headed in a fantastic direction. Um, Monday Night Raw was a really good show. Mm. They continue to move in the right direction. The CM Punk and um, Drew McIntyre. Ah, I love Drew, man. I, I think that he's in a really good space right now. I think this is going to be a big match. I think this is a long-term storyline that they're building towards. Maybe SummerSlam. Um, it may be if they're in the UK before SummerSlam, they may do that there. And mm. if they do do it in UK, yeah, Drew's going over on CM Punk. You know, honestly, I I, I do think that Drew McIntyre should be continually pushed to the next level and stuff. So uh, hopefully we see that. But it was a really good RAW and stuff and. Um, I'm intriguing to see what happens in the weeks to come and stuff. So there it is for the WWE. And um, we definitely got to speak on the things that the uh, tech master <laughs> spoke on, you know. It <laughs> has been blown up. It has been blown up. His latest video, and the comment section is just going wild about this, Shadow. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy to see that um, how um, if you look at where uh, AEW is right now mm-hmm. and – what AEW has been putting on as a product on television and then just the chatter that's going on X and everywhere else about how people are disappointed with the product so if you think about the product of AEW and you you say to yourself do I am I excited to watch it this week 
And if the answer is no, then there's a problem. So if you look at the one thing that they could do to help it, it would be about storylines and building matches. Mm. And here's the difference. And this is what the tech master touched on. So supposedly maybe framed and worded in a certain way, but to swerve the fans or whatever. But uh, Tony Khan with the Bucks, the presidents of uh, AEW are going to air footage of Jungle Boy and CM Punk backstage fight and analyze it or whatever it is. And my opinion is it, it just comes down to this. This takes me to that very moment when Hulk Hogan turned heel. Uh, and when he turned heel in WCW and the fans started throwing trash in the ring, it was one of the most unforgettable moments in wrestling history. And I think that this may have the possibilities of turning into one of the most unforgettable moments in wrestling history. If they show footage of CM Punk and Jungle Boy, Jack Perry, Luke Perry's son, uh, having a fight backstage months ago, because there's no reason to show it. If there was a feud that they were building and a storyline that they were building towards this, then cool, it would make sense. But if this is just to a knock on CM Punk because he left, because he's in WWE now, then that's one of the worst moves you could ever possibly make. This is not like a uh, WCW moment when Alundra Blaze showed up on 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 um, Nitro mm -hmm. right when Raw was airing and she took the women's title and threw it in the trash. It's not one of those moments. This is one of those moments where you're sour that a guy left and um, this is you having a little hissy fit on TV. Well, so, are, it, are you sure Shadow is a little bit uh, sour on that or you think CM Punk drag this up a little bit by being on that podcast man i think honestly it's like if you're going to respond respond to the same level of where he responded but like mm -hmm. because your your daddy's a billionaire and because you have your own show you're going to go on the air and do that like it makes no sense that's a trump move honestly and i i think that if if this guy is 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 someone smart enough to just pull him aside and say listen man if this is not building towards a food or storyline mm -hmm. that's in our content our promotion our thing don't do it you know or swerve it into something that means something that leads towards something if this is a big push and lead into jack perry's return jungle boy's return cool mm -hmm. fantastic now here's the thing it's the presidents the young bucks or whatever they want to call themselves right now leading towards jack perry coming in and feuding with them cool fantastic but then the thing that you would want as a fan is to see Luchasaurus and Jack Perry reunite as a tag team and then take on the Young Bucks. Now, if you're building towards that, cool, fantastic. What it has to do with CM Punk, absolutely nothing. Uh, that's my own opinion. So um, we'll look to see what happens, and hopefully it's a good thing, you know, um, and hopefully it doesn't destroy this company because I can imagine fans walking out. I can imagine fans throwing trash in the ring. So it's one of those two things that could possibly happen um, uh, when they do render that footage. Well, but, well yeah. let me ask you this. Do you think that this might be just a build up to a major stunt and it might not be real? Do you think this is one of the times that he's really drummed up a really smart promotional point because he's got everyone talking? It's all over YouTube. It's all over X. It's all over Instagram. So do you think this might be the one time that he actually built some real kind of like positive promotion and then he comes out of nowhere and it's not what we all think it's going to be other than his ego getting away i think that it has a strong possibilities of being a bait and switch mm -hmm. um and that is get people as many people as you can to tune in for that mm -hmm. segment but then there the, the the danger in that is during that segment if it is not what people are looking for Mm -hmm. they'll turn the channel uh and the ratings will whoop, plunge big time and then if it was good enough to where people will stay tuned to the entire show mm -hmm. now they could bait, bait you in and, and just milk it milk it milk it through the whole tv to the whole uh to the whole show mm -hmm. and then yeah you'll have like your ratings will go up some uh but then next week your ratings will be in the toilet they'll probably be worse than they ever were so it's it's a big gamble and hopefully someone's smart enough to tell them how to uh 
get it to pay off. But overall, if you ask my opinion about AEW, it's lacking in direction. They're lacking in storylines. They're they're totally missing the boat on building matches. Um, you you are uh, Will Horsebray or Horsebray, that guy uh, from London, UK. Mm -hmm. He's a fantastic wrestler. He signed with AEW, <laughs> and and the dream match for a lot of fans is Daniel Bryan before against him or Bryan Daniels, whatever you want to call him, um, the American Dragon against him. So what they did to build up this match was announced it that night. He's wrestling Daniel Bryan. Okay, cool. The main event. How many people? They 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 their ratings are at like seven hundred thousand uh, mm -hmm. viewers. So like, how many millions of people missed that match because you didn't build up towards it? That's mm -hmm. something that you build up for like a couple of weeks, and uh, they do a face to face. They cross paths in the backstage. They they give each other the eye. They they cut promos and stuff, and they build up for a tremendous match. That's your payoff in a couple of weeks where you build up towards something. I think the only storyline that they got going on right now that's really good is Samoa Joe and Swerve Strickland for the uh, AEW title. Mm -hmm. uh, they've been building it for weeks. They've been face-to-face. -face. They've cut promos, and they 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 went at it in the ring. Samoa Joe left Swerve Strickland lying after beating him with a chain, and then Swerve gets up bloodied up and then he said he laughs and says yeah mm -hmm. i love this i live mm -hmm. for this and he signs the contract with blood oh wow who wrote that storyline they should be writing more storylines was it swerve and joe that basically gave the ad lib or gave the input on that storyline because whoever it is at least had the idea and a good notion to say we're going to write a great storyline for these guys we're going to build up the world title match so it means something so hopefully, you know, it pays off. I love Joe. Joe is, is a workhorse and everything, but Swerve Strickland's time is now. Um, so uh, AEW will mess up if they don't put that title around Swerve now while he's hot. Um, and that was, uh, that's my opinion. And then it comes down to, as I stated, on storylines. Um, they have a great opportunity with Malachi Black in the House of Black. Um, that whole team is tremendous. It's it's like it's like the judgment day mm -hmm. should be, and you, when you look at them, the lights go out and stuff. It's like that's how the judgment day should be on that level and those caliber of wrestlers. But there needs to be more in their storyline. There needs to be more that's given to us. Feed me with something that shows how dark these guys are. You know, when you look at the House of Black, you kind of get the feel and the vibe of Bray Wyatt. And you get the feel and vibe of what um, the um, Judgment Day should be. Mm -hmm. But there's an opportunity to really build this group. You put the title on Swerve Strickland and you build towards Malachi Black, the House of Black, going after the ADW title. You got to put gold around these guys' waist and you got to build them up. And then you got the camp that has um, uh, Castellano. You got uh, John Moxley and you got the American Dragon, uh, Danny Bryan. That's a group that's really solid, that's really hot. They're all former WWE guys, and these guys should be on the top all the time. And that's a few that you should be building towards better than what they did, where they just put them on TV and just had them wrestle. So I think there's opportunity there. I think there's opportunity where even if you think of an idea of Malachi Black and the House of Black, going after kill switch they pull in kill switch they draw him in i mean this guy has that whole undertaker steam look with the dragon mask and everything else like that yeah. uh future source what, what they used to call him um if you took him from christian they beat down christian and that kid that's with him to a point where edge comes in and saves him and then they reunite and then do a feud with malachi black in the house of black there's a lot of opportunity that they have in uh, AEW. They've got some really great young talent there. They just need to figure out how to focus on making this stuff better, man, and just writing some good storylines. Get rid of some of these guys that are just old from NWA, WCW. Mm -hmm. uh, Tony Schiavone, I got no beef with him, but honestly, it's like getting in the ring to interview a wrestler just holding the microphone so they can snatch it out of your hand. That was done in WCW. That was done back in a day. 
it's over with. If you're going to do a backstage interview where you're sitting on the couch and you guys are having a conversation, cool. But Tony Schiavone in the ring showing how old he is or how jacked up he is just to hold the mic for someone mm-hmm. to say, get your ass out the ring. You know, it's it's fruitless. Like, done. It's been done. It's old. Tony well, Schiavone, let, don't do it anymore. Let me ask yeah. you this. Do you think that uh, right now Mercedes Monet, uh, as they're calling her right now, do you think she regrets not probably going back to the WWE? Because right now it seems like they're kind of like she's wasting her talent. And after what we saw, WrestleMania, it looks like there's just not enough talent there in her division. Um, I think that they do have talent there. Some of these girls look like they just came from the stripper club. Uh, <laughs> some of these girls look like they're really good wrestlers. Mm. Um, there is some good talent there. It's just they don't put time and effort into building these talents, into building storylines for these girls. They just put them in the ring, and then they're wrestling. And I'm I'm saying to myself, who are these girls? And half the time, I say 80% of the time, I fast forward. You know, mm-hmm, and unless mm-hmm. it's that uh, um, anime uh, eight Japanese girl, that little skinny girl, she's really good. She's very talented. They should be doing vignettes of her because she's really that good. But when it comes to... Um, Mercedes Monet, I think her problem is she's not she's not wishing that she resigned yet because she's she's fresh new there. She hasn't figured it out yet. Um, she thinks she is the boss and she thinks she's it right now. But like the fans are going to basically get bored with her just like mm-hmm. they got bored with Edge. You talk about Edge, WWE Hall of Famer. And people are bored. You're like, you have no real good storyline. And the first thing you do is go into a match with your best friend. That mm-hmm. they didn't build it. They, you know, again. So uh I think honestly, it's it's a matter of time if they don't put some real interest and attention to the women's division. Yeah, she'll be tired mm-hmm. of it really quick. I mean, uh, uh, look at uh, what's her name, Jay Cargill. She's in exactly. Mm-hmm. She's happy. She's excited mm-hmm. of what's going to go. I do think this about Jay Cargill, just because mentioning. Mm-hmm. They're going to be real careful with her. They got to reel her in. They got to mm-hmm. keep it tight with her. She should have minimal interview time. Uh, I saw an interview with her outside of WWE. Yes. And mm-hmm, mm-hmm. She she kind of, you know, it's, it's that ghetto thing. But it's like sometimes you just less is better, you know. And um, even like, which, I'm here. This is me. This is mine. Yeah, you can do the hype up thing. But just don't get all hyped up about yourself because you're there and because there's hype behind you to a point where your head gets too big to where you think you are the woman's, woman, you know, the mm-hmm. top girl. Patting yourself like Rhea Ripley did, put in the work like Rhea Ripley did, and you will be that one. Uh, I believe she can be. It's just a matter of her just pacing herself. You're 31 years old. You still mm-hmm. got time. Give yourself a year, and you'll be there. Just give yourself time. Just don't, like, get your head all so big to where you just not lost it. And Michelle M- uh, Monet, you know, she's got to really think about this, too. It's like where she's at in her career, mm-hmm. and she's got to create moments creatively you've already signed so it's kind of too late they're probably agreed to put the belt on her but oh, yeah. make the match yeah. mean something you know it's just got to mean something that's well, my thoughts on it. it's the two things about i remember as we were talking uh earlier about um giving the fans what they want and um it seems like they're just the aew has a problem doing that because i think the fans actually want to see edge and christian team back up yeah. And I think that that was what the fans wanted, and they didn't do that. But now giving the fans what they want, um, and I know you were very controversial about this on uh, during the uh, WrestleMania, uh, was it right for Roman Reigns to drop the belt at that time? Um, I think with the theme of WrestleMania being the new era, mm-hmm. it was right for Roman to drop the title. Roman was originally Vince's guy. Cody was not. Um, but at the same time, I think that they, I, I, I will say the negative on that was that Roman was so close to beating Hogan's <laughs> record that there was honestly, it, whatever excuse there is and that we all say, um, and giving the fans what they want and everything, it's like, I don't think in this, in this, in this next decade, we'll see another wrestling superstar. Mm-hmm hold the belt long enough and can hold the belt long enough mm-hmm. to where 
you'll beat Hogan's record. Because there's one thing to put the belt on someone and someone to hold it, but it's another thing to where it's like you're still selling out. You're still selling mm -hmm. merchandise. You're still the top guy because you sell merchandise, you sell pay-per-views, and, and you get ratings on television. And when the ratings start to drop, you drop the strap. That's really what it comes down to. So, honestly, it's like in, in the last 10 years, there was no one like Roman Reigns that could carry that belt. Not even Brock Lesnar. Because when he was selling out, he got dull, too. And he mm -hmm. left for a reason, too. So, like, you think about all the stars in the past 10 years, man. There's been no one like Roman Reigns. And, and, and I'm excited to see what happens and what he does next. Because this guy is he's magical. He's special. So, we'll see what happens. Do you think Cody holds the belt uh, for a while? Or is he a transition champion? Honestly, Tech Master says five years. I wow. say this. Wow. Um, he's 38 years old, which mm -hmm. is LeBron's age. Mm -hmm. uh, I would I just say is that if he stays healthy, he can hold the belt for a while. How long he'll stay face? That's the only question. Because mm -hmm. if you keep the title on Cody at some point, and I mean in, in less than a year, he will have to turn heel. Because as much as the fans are cheering and loving him and the kids, he's like John Cena. Everybody mm -hmm. loved him. They got sick of him, you know. And I think it's going to be the same thing for Cody. And at some point, Cody's going to have to, like, tread that line somewhere in a gray area where he's faced. Mm -hmm. and, you know, love me or boo me or hate me or whatever. I'm still Cody Rhodes. That's where he's going to have to end up. And, you know, it's like, uh, what do you want to talk about? You can't say that every week, bro. You know what I mean? <laughs> what I want to talk about is you turning heel. That's what I want to talk about. So we'll see. right now he's hot. We, you know, we'll see how long that lasts. Okay. Yeah. Well, we've got some questions for the internet. Uh, a couple of key things that uh, they hit us up on. One was, uh, Shadow, what's the worst city that you've ever wrestled in? Hmm. Now, as an indie wrestler, you know, you 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 can work uh, nationwide. I really worked the Western region. Mm -hmm. And um, probably one of the worst cities I've ever been in is Lancaster. <laughs> we used to do shows in Lancaster. And, and this was back in, like, the early 90s. So uh -huh. there's nothing. there was nothing in Lancaster. No way go hang out, no cool bars, no cool spots to hang out. So it's like you put on a show and you go. And I think we did it for like a a, a boys and girls club or something like that and stuff. Mm -hmm. But it is not a fun. It's far to drive. And and it's like you work a long show, you get paid like 50 bucks, 100 bucks, and then you got to drive 50 something miles mm -hmm. back. So it's like so it let's barely context, pay for gas. That's La La uh, Lancaster, California, right? <laughs> yes, Lancaster, California. Okay. Yes, this is not, not right. a... Not so, a cool spot, brother. So we will no longer be allowed to go to Lancaster. Now. <laughs> Probably not. Yeah. I'm cool with it, though. I'm cool with it. <laughs> okay. And the second question of the night is, uh, what was the biggest pay-per-view or event that um, you, yourself was personally involved in? Um, now, I did do Fight Zone, which was a Hollywood thing, fighting mm -hmm. thing, which we spoke about last time. Yes. But probably the biggest wrestling event I was involved in was uh, the World Wrestling Peace Festival, okay. uh, where um, I was I was uh, given a task. Jesse Hernandez, I believe, called me. He said, hey, man, I want you to meet Mr. Sakaguchi. Uh, I met him, and he ran the L.A. LA Club. Uh, downtown LA, something. It was the LA Health Club or LA something club, whatever. But um, sat there with him and at the office. He says, "Oh, we're going like to put a show on uh, wrestling. What do you think? A wrestling show?" So I'm supposed to be the voice of professional wrestling. So I was like, "Oh, that'd be great." He's like, "Antonio Inoki, big wrestling uh, thing." And I'm like, "I got some ideas." So we started talking and. Um, I was like, yeah, if you, it, it was talking about like bringing all the groups together. So at then it was WCW, mm -hmm. AAA Wrestling, WWE. Mm -hmm. And it was like, wow, bringing all those guys together would be tremendous. So um, then he says, okay, I need you to tell this to Antonio Inoki. And I'm like, what? Antonio Inoki is a legend. This guy, this guy fought Muhammad Ali. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? It's like. He's legendary. He's a senator in Japan at the time. Wow. And so um, I had like a very small window and he said, going to meet them at the airport 
him and the Japanese delegates that are coming into LA and um, you got to sell them on this. So I went and I got I gathered all the information I possibly could and everything and stuff. And then boom, I'm right there in front of the delegates. I'm bowing and I'm saying, hello, sir. It's a privilege, it's an honor. And then I pitch it to him. I'm like, I'm throwing out numbers. I'm like Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant and Tony Onoki and Hulk Hogan. Those were some of the biggest things. And at the time they were trying to promote uh, Dan Severn. So I said, Antonio Noki and Dan Severn and all this other kind of stuff. And then I started bringing up all these independent wrestlers. Mm -hmm. So um, in the process, uh, and Paul Heyman mentioned this at the Hall of Fame. He said he was the guy that gave Jericho, Rey Mysterio, and a lot of luchadors an opportunity, which mm -hmm. he did do. But mind you this, at the World Wrestling Peace Festival, we had, and so basically I came together with a Bob Cartago and we started laying out like ideas for the show and then everything else like that. The program, I did the program mm -hmm. and then I went, did some merchandise and stuff. And then we started talking about the card. And of course, with the card, we, we laid in and Chris Jericho, Ray Mysterio, the guys that were at Triple A, Seacosis mm -hmm. and all these other guys and stuff. Then we were looking at WCW and who they had available. And it was Dan Severin and, um, um, a couple of other guys, I think like Louis Bacoli was on the court. Then mm -hmm. it was Jesse's guys from the Hard Knocks guys. So I think uh, Ricky Ataki, Stephanie DeLeon, a lot of the guys opened up the show and stuff. Uh, so there was a great opportunity and this turned into uh, an audition, an audition to WCW. Eric mm -hmm. Bischoff was there. I got a chance to uh, interview Eric Bischoff how great it was and everything and stuff and looking at the talent and everything. And a lot of those guys got signed with WCW in the wow. few years, really blossom and stuff. So as much as you can say that, uh, yeah, Paul Hayden gave him a stage, the big stage and the big audition was at the world wrestling peace festival. And that was the moment where a lot of these guys really got a chance to shine wow. and show Eric Bischoff like, yo, and in the process of that weekend, WCW and AAA had meetings and they came to a working relationship and that also transitioned to um to uh WCW television stuff. Oh, so wow. A lot of the cruiserweight stuff and all that other kind of stuff kind of came out of that. So yeah, yeah. World Wrestling Peace Festival at the LA Sports Arena, which LA Sports is Arena. <laughs> fourteen thousand uh capacity. We had about like five, six thousand people. Mm -hmm. So that was probably the biggest show I've ever worked on and everything and, and, and claim the fame. It, it, a lot of people don't know if it wasn't for the shadow, that show would have never happened. So, mm -hmm. um, hey, it is what it is. Maybe one day I'll go into the Hall of Fame. Uh, Cauliflower <laughs> Alley Cub, do you hear me? Cauliflower Alley Cub, hey. You know, but um, yeah, no, that was like, that was cool. That was a good moment in time. Well, like I said, again, I'm sure every one of those guys probably appreciated the opportunity because it seems like there was a lot of stars built. So, again, Shadow, we're coming down to the end and everything else yeah. like that. Now, here's the thing. We're going to tease a little something for the next time. We're going to say that not only was the uh, the Peace World Wrestling Peace Festival that you did, but we're going to we're going to go into something about Comic-Con that you did that oh, no one else did. And it was... It was awesome. I was there to witness it too, man. So we're, we're, we'll save that for the next episode, man. Oh yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. All right. that, that's all I'll say. That's <laughs> that's it. All, oh, it's wild. Yeah. We, we got photos and everything else like that to show. Uh, too bad we did take video in that era, but uh, yeah, I wish, it's going right? to be awesome to run that through. So, hey, man, again, hey, awesome shoot shot. Always a pleasure to sit with you, Shadow. Uh, any parting words for the fans? Oh. Before that, I got something mm -hmm. for you. Uh-oh. Now, uh -oh. I, 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 I'll I, just say this, that uh, to all the fans that are listening and tuning in, that uh, Mr. Storm and, and Dr. Brentley both came up with an idea of starting the uh, Shadow Nose Network. And um, it was Mr. Storm that kind of pushed and pushed and pushed and said, hey, man, look, let's do this. Let's do this thing and everything. So, like, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be sitting here right now doing this thing and I'm having fun and I'm just enjoying myself. There's no pressure. We're just doing this to just kind of tell stories and stuff, and it's exciting and stuff. And I thank you, and I appreciate you for bringing me back. So uh, Shadow's Toy Hut, Shadow <laughs> found this for Mr. Stone. Let me get a close-up of that if I can get it focused there. Uh, uh, get a little focus. It, it is. There you go. There you go. It's, it's uh, the G.I. Joe Snake Eyes uh, <laughs> and, and uh, Timber. So this is for you, Mr. Storm. All right. Uh, uh, when we connect, 
I got it for you, brother. There's one that connects. Well, let me tell you, brother. <laughs> you know, although we did it, everybody knows your massive talent and everybody that's been in, involved with you, like myself, Mr. Brentley, uh, you know, Chris, the tech master. Uh, yeah. We all appreciate you because you were also the reason why our careers were started. So, like, again, man, you know, it goes both ways, but I'm, I'm glad you got this platform to shine. And the fans have been saying they miss Shadow. And I'm glad that we're bringing them back, man. <laughs> right on, brother. Right on, man. So, hey, fans, till next time, we're going to have some cool, fun shows and stuff. And we're going to have some surprises down the line. So, get ready. It's going to be a roller coaster ride. And we will have some rebuts on what happens uh, on AEW with uh, Tony Conte. Yeah. Check out my man, the Tech Master. He's like doing his thing. He's on fire right now. Wow. So, check out the Tech Master. I think he's going to have a response right after uh, that displays in air. So, yeah. Dr. Storm, it's been a pleasure. What's I uh, Dr. Storm? Uh <laughs> Storm, it's been a pleasure, brother. Till next time, man. All right, brother. Out.